Hello and welcome to another Overlord Lore video and today we will take a look at the absolute pinnacle of power, the top 3 strongest entities that have ever existed in the new world. And therefore make sure to check out the other two parts of this series, link to them in the description. And as usual, thanks to my patrons for supporting this channel. Now as mentioned in the first part, we are going by peak power, meaning that every item every bit of knowledge and any ability a character could have, but without any external help, for example in the form of allied guild members. So a king's army wouldn't count, while Henry's goblin army would, just because she summoned it via one of her items, the horn of the goblin general. And of course peak power also means the power while they were still alive, and the power they would have wielded in the new world despite not being transported there in the canon storyline. And I especially highlight this because place number 3 is Touch Me. The insect in shining armor is essentially the player equivalent of a world item, a world champion, with world champion armor, an incredible rare and powerful type of gear that only those who won a world champion tournament of their respective worlds could ever hope to gain. And Touch Me did it making him one of the strongest entities back in Yggdrasil, so how's that for a first impression? Now to highlight his extreme skill and abilities as a player, let's look at the following fact. Eins, despite wielding insta-death spells and an insta-death spell buff that enables him to kill everything, alive or dead, never managed to win a single duel back in Yggdrasil. Just for context, shalt your blood fallen and her build that counters Einzel Gaun pretty hard would only be able to win 60 out of 100 hypothetical battles, while Touch Me, thus far, had won every single battle against Eins, despite him having the goal of All Life is Death and a world item equipped. So Eins didn't manage to win once, even by chance and pure luck. And apparently he wasn't the only one, for his very name was a challenge. Touch me, while being also a not exactly subtle joke, was also way more than that. It was a challenge to actually do damage to him. He gamed the system apparently so hard that he was near invulnerable and able to deal an incredible massive amount of damage. Being able to cut the fabric of space-time in half to an even greater degree than Reality Slash would be able to do. And he also saved the inexperienced Momonga from a raid group of multiple players with a single attack. So even if you compare him to normal players, Touch Me was far superior. And even among one of the most professional and dedicated player killer guilds in all of Yggdrasil, he was overpowered. A monster among monsters, if you will. Touch Me basically stood at the very pinnacle of Einzel Gaun. And while he was the strongest player, and Shaltir still is the strongest floor guardian, and Gargantua is the floor guardian with the highest stats, none of them could compete with the strongest entity in all of the Great Tomb, Rubedo, the Ultima Ratio Regum of the Sorcerer King himself, a power even those revered as gods call upon. And Rubedo likely compares to average players, the same way level 100 players compare to normal New World beings. The sheer amount of power behind this area guardian even surpasses that of Touch Me. And if mishaps would occur, Albedo, yes, I'm looking at you, then Rubedo only could be held in check by the 8th floor hierarchy, which are multiple level 100 characters stationed at the strongest floor of Nazarek, and yet Eins considered to give them a world item, just to be sure that they would be indeed able to actually contain Rubedo. I mean he almost talked about Albedo's little sister, like the SCP Foundation does about the rapidly regenerating reptile. Imagine what it takes to have one character outnumbered by several top-notch battle NPCs, and thinking about actually adding a world item on top of all this to contain this single character. It is insane, but we also have to consider that Rubedo might be created 
by a world item herself. Now Gargantua might be a viable candidate for this as well, since all of his stats are maxed out. But it was gifted by the developers, and not built by Einzel Gaun. So Roberto might be actually the one with the world item as the core, since she was created by a different process according to her sister Nigredo which also would make her a golem, since it is speculated that the Caloric Stone was used to create her. But here's one other thing to consider. Eins Ulgaon, the guild, had held the seven mines that produces the ores necessary to craft Caloric Stones, the consumable world item, for an undefined period of time, while they were eventually exiled via the world item Ouroboros. We don't know if they had the time to create one Caloric Stone, or in fact, several of them. I mean, Rubedo's Latin for reddening. And AMD is known for multi-core processors. So that's that. But it indeed could be the case that she was created with multiple world items. And I imagine Tabula Smaragdina laughing maniacally, like Dr. Victor Frankenstein, as he was in the process of creating his greatest being. Oh, and she apparently is min-maxed for melee battles, making her even more lopsided. Like I said in my other videos, I really would like to see how Platinum Dragonlord's real body would fight against the strongest entities in all of Nazarek. I know in actuality your guild wears two world items. I have a 64 core central processing unit and the order to kill. Now, speaking of Platinum Dragonlord, Thanks to Pandora's Actors battle against him, we know that at the very least, Platinum blames the appearance of players on his father, which is likely the Dragon Emperor, which implies that it was, at the very least in part, his power that made all of the in-game items that thus far had been nothing but data real, as well as the Great Tomb, all of its NPCs, items, rooms, as well as all of the other players and their gear, items and NPCs. It was also stated that Tear Magic had polluted and twisted Wild Magic. A link to a video detailing this in the description. But my point is, that until summoned, all of the players, all of the items and all of the magic were just data. Only the summoning by the Dragon Emperor is what made them real. So in essence, the total magic power in the world might have remained the same, but instead of it being 100% pure wild magic, it is likely now 90% tier magic plus 10% remaining wild magic, used by the few remaining dragon lords. Which would explain why the wild magic is now so weakened, and why dragons learn tier magic naturally, via level ups and advancement in age. This is probably also the reason why dragon lords refer to world class items as wild magic, with both Tsarendorkus Vasion as well as Cure Elim did. Also both dragon lords confirm that the dragon emperor is more or less responsible for the appearance of the players. Cure Elim referred to Eins as the dragon emperor scum, and Platinum Dragonlord reinforced this by stating that ultimately his father is to blame for all the things that happened. So this would mean that the Dragon Emperor had at one point in history wielded such immense might that he used wild magic to summon all of the world items, players and NPCs. Which means that all of the power Eins has, all of the power Rubedo has, all of the power of tier magic users have, and all of the world items are in essence transformed wild magic given form by the Dragon Emperor, and thus making him the strongest overall entity in all of Overlord, and also the one who destroyed the very foundation of the wild magic system by summoning the world items and its users. And the only thing uncertain is how much of this incredible amount of energy was his own. And that is a top 10 list of the strongest entities in all of Overlord. Now be sure to let me know your opinions on it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And if so, why? And while you are commenting, let me just say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Adam J. Al Capone. Andy. Angel of Death. 
बैठ गए ये बॉयजिला क्रिसी डायबेटिक सेंटावर डिस्टोपिया इलाइका बर्चलीफ फेलिस केटस फराशिवान गीगाफाइट गोस्ट ऑफ एपिकनेस हेक्टो मोरिनो ब्लैक फिनिक्स एम्पोर हॉस जानबी जेसन क्लाइनाटोर क्रोमियस लार्ज Legendarius Lord Nishikian Rai Lord Touch Me Lord Albert Elaine Odell Lucas Oli Lexus Fox Majima Mad Mad C Mad Ambulance Marcos Mr Shoes Mindless Wrath Mino 13 Mirtis Inferius Potion Primus 11 Sasuga Einsama Sebastian Shadow Lightning Wolf Search Sparkly Unicorn The Orc Warboss Rock Ed Smasher Sunlight Vash Hawk Eye Zago, Bane of a Lord, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys, and sorry for the ambulance. Anyway, have a nice day. Over and out.